Dear students, in the previous classes, you have studied about the periodic table and its development. In class 11th, you have studied in unit 3 that periodic table is divided into 4 blocks that is S, P, D and F block elements. In previous sessions, you have studied about the P block elements. In this unit, we will study about D and F block elements in detail. Today, you will study about the general introduction of the D and F block elements popularly known as transition and inner transition elements respectively. Their position in the periodic table, the electronic configuration of the D block and F block elements, the general properties of the transition elements, the physical properties and the trend and the cause of the variation of atomic and ionic sizes of the transition elements. Here you can see a picture of periodic table. Elements from group 3 to 12 represents D block elements or transition metals. Two series at the bottom are F block elements also known as inner transition metals. Here you can see the picture. The D block of the periodic table contains elements from group 3 to 12 represents the D block elements or the transition metals. The two series at the bottom are F block elements also known as inner transition metals. The D block of the periodic table contains the elements of the group 3 to 12 in which the D orbitals are progressively filled in each of the four long periods of the periodic table. The F block consists of elements in which the 4f and 5f orbitals are progressively filled and is placed in the separate panels in the bottom of the periodic table. The names of the transition metals and the inner transition metals are often used to refer to the elements of D and F block respectively. The D block elements. In the figure, you can see that there are four series of D block. The first is the 3D series from scandium to zinc, 4D series from yttrium to cadmium, 5D series from lanthanum, hafnium to mercury and 6D series from actinium, rutherfordium to copernicium. The two series of the inner transition metals are the 4F series is from cerium to lutetium and the 5F series from thorium to laurentium and they are known as lanthanides and actinides respectively. In the figure shown below, you can see all the series. The first formal member of group 3 of 5D that is lanthanum and 6D that is actinium series has been discussed with the elements of the F block due to its resemblance in the properties with the F block elements. Most of the elements of the 6D that is transuranium are short lived and synthetic. Strictly speaking, a transition element has incompletely filled D orbitals in its ground state or in any one of its oxidation states. Zinc, cadmium and mercury of group 12 have complete D10 configuration in their ground state as well as in their common oxidation states and hence are not regarded as transition metals. However, being the end members of the D series, their chemistry is studied along with the chemistry of the transition metals. The presence of the partly filled D or F orbitals in their atoms sets the study of the transition elements and their compounds which makes them different from that of the main group elements. However, the usual theory of the valence as applicable to the main group elements can also be applied successfully to the transition elements. Various precious metals such as silver, gold and platinum 
and industrially important metals like iron, copper and titanium. They form the part of the transition metals. Let me show you few transition metals like copper, zinc and iron. And the few images of the elements like titanium, gold and platinum. Now let's see the image of molybdenum, chromium and yttrium. In this module, we shall deal with the electronic configuration, occurrence and the general characteristics of the transition elements with special emphasis on the trends in the properties of the first row that is 3D series, the transition metals and the preparation and properties of some important compounds. This will be followed by the general electronic configurations, oxidation states and the chemical reactivity of the inner transition metals. The transition elements that is D block elements. Now let us first discuss their position in the periodic table. The D block occupies the large middle section in the periodic table flanked by S and P blocks. In image, you can see the block represented in the blue color. It's between S and P block elements. The name transition elements is given to the D block as they exhibit properties intermediate between the S and P block elements. The d orbitals of the penultimate energy level of the atoms receive electrons which give rise to the four rows of the transition metals that is 3D, 4D, 5D and 6D series. These series of the transition elements are shown in table 1. Electronic configuration of the d block elements. In general, the electronic configuration of these elements is n minus 1 d 1 to 10 electrons n s 0 to 2 electrons. The n minus 1 d stands for the inner d orbitals which may have 1 to 10 electrons and the outermost n s orbital may have none, 1 or 2 electrons. This generalization is because of very little energy difference between n minus 1 d and n s orbitals. Furthermore, half and completely filled sets of the orbitals are relatively more stable. A consequence of this factor is reflected in the electronic configuration of chromium and copper in the 3D series. Let's consider first the case of the chromium. For example, which has 3D5 4S1 instead of expected 3D4 4S2 electronic configuration. The energy gap between the two sets 3D and 4S of the orbitals is small enough to prevent the electron entering the 3D orbitals. Similarly, in case of the copper, the configuration is 3D10 4S1 and it's not 3D9, 4S2. The outer electronic configuration of the first row transition elements is given in the table. In the figure, you can see the valence shell electronic configuration of the first series transition metals. The electronic configuration of zinc, cadmium, mercury and copernicium are represented by the general formula N-1D, 10, Ns2. The orbitals in these elements are completely filled in the ground state as well as in their common oxidation states. Therefore, these are not regarded as transition elements. Dear students, let me tell you, this is a frequently asked questions in the exam. Why zinc, cadmium and mercury are not regarded as transition metals? The electronic configuration of the ions of the D block elements. Dear students, you must understand and practice to write the electronic configurations of the ions of the D block as it is commonly asked in the exams and to attempt the conceptual questions also. The next unit of the coordination compounds is also based on this. For writing the electronic configuration of the ions correctly, you have to keep in mind that 
In d block elements, the ns electrons are removed before n minus 1 d electrons. This is in contrast to the ions of the main group elements where the last added valence electrons are lost first. Now let us discuss the few questions. Example 1, on what ground can you say that scandium Z, Z represents the atomic number and the atomic number of the scandium is 21, is a transition element but the zinc with atomic number 30 is not. Now let me answer that scandium atom in its ground state 3d1 has incompletely filled 3d orbitals. So it is regarded as a transition element. On the other hand, zinc atom has completely filled d orbital that is 3d10 in its ground state as well as in its oxidized state. Hence, it is not regarded as a transition element. Now the next question, the silver atom has completely filled d orbitals 4d10 in its ground state. How can you say that it is a transition element? For an element to be termed as a transition element, it should have partially filled d orbitals in its atom or in the commonly found oxidation state. Silver can exhibit plus 2 oxidation state where 3d9 in which it has partially filled d orbitals. Due to this reason, we can say that silver is a transition element. Now the next question, name the transition element which do not have partly filled d orbitals in their atoms or in the commonly found oxidation states. The last member of each of the transition series that is zinc, cadmium, mercury are not regarded as transition elements because they do not have partially filled d orbitals. They do not have partially filled d orbitals in their atom as well as simple ions having oxidation state of plus 2. Therefore, these elements do not possess the characteristic properties of the transition elements and hence generally not regarded as transition elements. Now the next example which is very important, write down the electronic configuration of chromium 3 plus, nickel 2 plus, manganese 2 plus, Fe in plus 3 state that is ferric ion, cuprous ion Cu plus and Zn2 plus. Now let us first of all let us remember that the 4s electrons are removed first prior to the n minus 1 d that is 3 d electrons. The electronic configuration of Cr 3 plus it is 1 s 2, 2 s 2, 2 p 6, 3 s 2, 3 p 6, 3 d 3. The electronic configuration of nickel in plus 2 stage is 1 s 2, 2 s 2, 2 p 6, 3 s 2, 3 p 6, 3 d 8. Manganese in plus 2 state is 1 s 2, 2 s 2, 2 p 6, 3 s 2, 3 p 6, 3 d 5. Fe in 3 plus state, it is 1 s 2, 2 s 2, 2 p 6, 3 s 2, 3 p 6. 3d5. Cu plus, it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6 and 3d10. Zinc in 2 plus state, it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6 and 3d10. Now the general properties of the transition elements or the d block the d orbitals of the transition elements project to the periphery of an atom more than the s and the p orbitals. So they, move, so, they are more influenced by the surroundings and also affect the atoms or the molecules surrounding them. With partly filled d orbitals, these elements exhibit certain characteristic properties such as 
the display of the variety of oxidation states, the formation of the colored ions, the paramagnetic behavior, the catalytic properties and entering into complex formation with a variety of ligands. All these characteristics have been discussed in detail in the next module. The horizontal row similarities in the properties are more significant among the transition elements in the contrast to the main group elements. However, some group similarities also exist. We shall first study the general characteristics and their trends in the horizontal rows, particularly 3D row and then consider some group similarities. The physical properties. Nearly all the transition elements are metallic in nature and have simple HCP, CCP or BCC lattices. With the exceptions of zinc, cadmium, mercury and manganese, they have one or more typical metallic structures at normal temperatures. Table shows you the lattice structures of the transition metals. As you have already studied in unit 1 that is solid state, BCC stands for body centered cubic, HCP stands for hexagonal close packed and CCP stands for cubic close packed. And X, it is a typical metal structure the transition elements exhibit. The typical metal properties such as high tensile strength, ductility, malleability, the high thermal and electrical conductivity and metallic luster. Metallic luster can be easily seen in the picture shown. And beginning, also I have shown you the shiny surface of zinc and copper. These metallic properties are attributed to the involvement of greater number of unpaired electrons from N-1D in addition to the NS electrons in the interatomic metallic bonding. In general, greater is the number of the unpaired D electrons, stronger is the resultant metallic bonding. The transition metals with the exception of zinc, cadmium and mercury are very much hard, they have low volatility and their melting and the boiling points are high. The exceptions like zinc, cadmium and mercury do not show typical metallic properties due to fully filled d orbitals. The figure depicts the melting points of the 3D, 4D and 5D transition metals. In any row, the melting points of these metals rise to a maximum at D5 except for anomalous values of manganese and technetium and fall regularly as the atomic number increases. Figure shows you the trends in the melting points of the transition elements. They have high enthalpies of atomization which are shown in the figure. Again it is a frequently asked question that why the transition metals have high enthalpy of atomization. Now let me tell you. The maxima at about the middle of each series indicates that one unpaired electron per d orbital is particularly favorable for strong interatomic interaction. Since the enthalpy of atomization is an important factor in determining the standard electrode potential of a metal, so the metals with very high enthalpy of atomization tend to be noble in their reactions. We can check it that later in the module. Another generalization that may be drawn from figure is that the metals of the second and the third series have greater enthalpies of atomization than the corresponding elements of the first series. This is an important factor in accounting for the occurrence of much more frequent metal metal bonding in compounds of the heavy transition metals. Now the next property, the variation in the atomic and the ionic sizes of the transition metals. In general, atoms and the ions of the same charge in a given series show progressive decrease in the radius with increasing atomic number. 
This is because as the new electron enters in the d orbital, each time the nuclear charge increases by unity. It may be recalled that the shielding effect of a d electron is not effective. Hence, the net electrostatic attraction between the nuclear charge and the outermost electron increases and the ionic radius decreases. The same trend is observed in the atomic radii of a given series. However, the variation within a series is quite small. The decrease in the metallic radius coupled with the increase in the atomic mass results in a general increase in the density of these elements. Thus from titanium atomic number 22 to copper atomic number 29, the significant increase in the density may be noted. An increasing point emerges, an increasing point emerges when atomic sizes of one transition series are compared with those of the corresponding elements in the other series. The curves in the figure shows an increase in the atomic radii from the first that is 3d to the second 4d series of the elements. But the radii of the third 5d series are virtually the same as those of the corresponding members of the second series. This phenomena is associated with the intervention of the 4f orbitals which must be filled before the 5d series of the elements begin. The filling of the 4f the filling of the 4f before the 5d orbital results in the regular decrease in the atomic radii called lanthanoid contraction which essentially compensates for the expected increase in the atomic size with increasing atomic number. The net result of the lanthanide contraction is that the elements of the second and the third D series exhibit similar radii. Example, zirconium 160 picometer and hafnium 159 picometer. Therefore, they have very similar physical and chemical properties, much more than the two congeners of the p block elements. Dear students, it is again a frequently asked question that is why zirconium and hafnium have almost similar atomic radii and the answer is due to lanthanoid contraction. The figure shows the trends in the atomic radii of the transition elements. The factor responsible for the lanthanoid contraction is somewhat similar to observed in an ordinary transition series and is attributed to the similar causes that is the imperfect shielding of one electron by another in the same set of orbitals. However, the shielding of one 4f electron by another is less than that of one d electron by another. And as the nuclear charge increases along the series, there is fairly regular decrease in the size of the entire 4f orbitals. Now the table shows you the electronic configurations and some other properties of the first series of the transition elements. Let us discuss few more questions. Why do the transition elements exhibit higher enthalpies of atomization? The answer is because of large number of unpaired electrons per atom. The transition metals have stronger interatomic interaction, hence stronger bonding between atoms resulting in higher enthalpies of atomization. Another question is, in the series scandium atomic number 21 to zinc atomic number 30, the enthalpy of atomization of zinc is 126 kilojoules per mole, that is the lowest. Why? The answer is the last element of the first transition series that is zinc has completely filled 3d orbitals. Therefore, these paired electrons are not involved in the formation of the metallic bonds. 
On the other hand, the other elements of the transition series from scandium to copper have unpaired electrons and these valence electrons present are involved in the metallic bonding. Hence, interatomic metallic bonding is the weakest in zinc and it has the lowest enthalpy of atomization. One more question. Why transition metals are hard metals? Answer, the transition metals possess large number of N minus 1 D and N S valence electrons per metal atom, which participate in interatomic metallic bond formation. Because of large number of metallic bonds, these are hard metals. Now let me summarize what we have studied today. In this module, we have introduced the D block elements in which the D orbitals are progressively filled. The D block occupies the large middle section of the periodic table and consists of group 3 to 12. The elements of the D block are also known as transition elements except the last member of the series that is group 12. The transition elements have partly filled D orbitals in their atoms or commonly found ions as zinc, cadmium and mercury. Hence, the fully filled D orbitals in their atoms and the stable oxidation state. So, these elements do not show the characteristic property of the transition elements. In general, the electronic configuration of the D block elements is N minus 1 D 1 to 10 N S 0 to 2 electrons. When D block elements form ions, they lose electrons from N S before N minus 1 D orbital. The series of the transition metals show large horizontal similarities in the properties though some group similarities are also there. All the transition elements exhibit typical metallic properties such as high tensile strength, ductility, malleability, thermal and electrical conductivity and the metallic character. Their melting point and the boiling points are high which are attributed to the involvement of N minus 1 D electrons resulting into strong interatomic bonding. In many of these properties, the maximum occur in many of these properties, the maxima occur at about the middle of each series, which indicates that one unpaired electron per d orbital favors strong interatomic interactions. In general, atoms and ions of the same charge in a given series show progressive decrease in radius with the increasing atomic number. However, the variation within a series is quite small. The atomic radii from the first 3D to the second 4D series of the elements increases. But the radii of the third series, the 5D series are virtually the same as those of the corresponding members of the second series. This phenomena is associated with the lanthanoid contraction. Dear children, hope now you will be able to identify the D and the F block elements in the periodic table. Write the electronic configuration of the transition D block elements and their ions and explain the general physical properties of the D block elements and explain the trend and the cause of variation of the atomic and the ionic size of the transition elements. In the next module, we will study about many more properties of the transition elements. Thank you.